Lord. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather here today before our Lord and our Creator, who created us to serve Him and to love one another. But we have separated ourselves from Him with our sins. So let us now confess our sins to Him and ask for His forgiveness. Merciful Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I make no excuses for my sins. I have sinned against you by the things I have done and the things I have not done. I come before you this morning in need of your forgiveness. Jesus Christ and come before him this morning forgiven of all of your sins. You are his child and an heir of eternal life. May God's grace strengthen you to live each day as his forgiven and dearly loved child. Amen. Uh, we join together in the verse. for the Lord God Almighty and, the, and we have a prayer and David recognizes the fact that the, the only reason that they were able to put together anything for this temple was because God had blessed them already 
And he recognized the fact that everything that they had really already belonged to God, and all they were doing is giving it back to him. And maybe as we approach Thanksgiving, that's a good lesson for us to remember. That everything that we have, and everything that we are, and everything that is a part of our life has been given to us by our God. So, First Chronicles chapter 29, this is what is written. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your name, your holy name, comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Paul and who is it? Barnabas, right? They go and they start <coughs> preaching, and people mistake them for Zeus, and and they say, no, no, don't worship us as God. There is another God, the true God, and He has made Himself known to you by the way that He provides for you. So we read from the Book of Acts. Good reminder for Thanksgiving. In Lystra there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Laconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, what, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless, th worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. This is the word of the Lord. We continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join together in our next hymn. Please stand. Forgive us for the times that we have doubted. Pray, Lord God, that, that today as we meditate on your word, that you would fill our hearts with trust and joy and thanksgiving, knowing that you are always faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, The world has this pattern, and it goes something like this. You, you go to work, right? And because you work, what do you get? Paycheck. And you take your paycheck home, and you use your paycheck to what? Buy stuff, provide for stuff, create a life, right? Take care of those that are entrusted to your care, and then you go back to work the next week, and you work for the week, and you get a paycheck and you take that home and you do all that and you get in this this pattern this circle that you go in and and it's 
We work, we earn, we spend that to take care of. Maybe we have a little bit extra and we save that up or use it for things that we like, things that we want. It's the way that the, pa the world works, the pattern that the world expects us to follow. And it seems logical and it seems to make a lot of sense. Even, even the part about doing, achieving what we want, what we like in life. If I want it, if I like it, I think about it, I, I, I set my mind on it, I, I, I take steps towards it, and I achieve the things that I want, I, I take care of the people that God has given to me, I work, I earn, I spend, I, I provide, I, I do, da, da, da. Problem with that that it puts a lot of emphasis on who? On you. And if anything should go wrong, you lose your job, or maybe the company isn't doing so well, or your boss is kind of a jerk, or, or the economy goes south, or your health starts to crumble, then it starts to get filled with worry and concern about whether or not you're going to be able to buy What's the future going to be? And is it all going to work out? Because, you know, if I can't go to work, there won't be a paycheck. And if there's no paycheck, then I can't provide. I can't take care of. Certainly can't do the things that I want or I like because it puts a lot of pressure, a lot of emphasis on us. And what we achieve and what we do. The harder I work, the more I earn, the more blessed I am, the more secure I am, right? The problem is that that's not the way that the Bible talks about not the way that Jesus talks about it. Jesus, when he talks about these things, tells us that that's not our job. That pressure for us to provide, that pressure for us to go to work, that pressure for us to make sure that everyone has what they need, that pressure even to make sure that those that we love or those that are in our care have a good time. None of that is our job. It actually is the job of, of God. Have you ever worked with someone who was trying to do your job as well as their job? Someone not only who was trying to do your job, but could barely do theirs, and yet somehow was trying to tell you that you're doing your job wrong, even when they can't even figure out how to take care of their own job. I... I Worked in a warehouse when I was at the seminary, just driving forklift, filling orders, things like that. It was a great job. I had done it for about a year. And one summer, the boss's son, the owner, not the boss, the owner's son needed a summer job, and so he was hired on, and he was my assistant. I'm sure you can tell where this is going to go. It was a disaster. From the very outset, here I am, I, he's supposed to be my assistant, I'm supposed to be teaching him how to fill these orders, how the warehouse works, and everything like that. Day one, he's telling me that he doesn't want to fill the orders, he wants to drive the forklift. And I said, first of all, you've never been trained. Second of all, even after you are trained, I'm the one driving the forklift, because I didn't want to fill the orders, I wanted to drive the forklift. <laughs> but, he said, well, I'm going to go talk to my dad. So we go ahead and talk to your dad. Dad comes down and says, he's driving the forklift. I think it was 10 minutes into him driving the forklift, and it was on its side. And we almost died. Here he is telling me that he would be better at doing the job that I was doing, and he didn't want to do the job that he was doing, and it was annoying, and it ended up in disaster and stress, and it took three hours or something like that for us to turn this forklift back upright. It was a disaster. You and I, when we sit here and try to decide what would make us happy or how our lives need to go, or when we think that somehow it is our job to make sure that we and those that we love have what we need, we are trying to do God's job. And the problem with doing God's job is we don't know how. <coughs> we are not suited to doing the work of the Almighty God. As smart as we like to think that we are, and as much as we think that we know what would be best for us, the reality is that you and I are human beings. And not only human beings, we are sinful human beings. And so for us to sit here and tell God what he needs to do and how he should do his job is just like the boss's son telling me that he was better at driving forklift than I was. Actually, it's worse. 
because the boss's son could have learned to drive a forklift. You and I will never learn to do God's job. And when we try and do the work of God, when we try and tell God how he should take care of us, what he should provide, or what will make us happy in life, it is no wonder that our lives become filled with stress and worry and, and, and doubt and frustration. We've been spending a lot of time over the last few weeks talking about finding true rest, true peace with the Almighty God, breathing, breathing out these things, these expectations, these, these, these uh, attitudes that lead to nothing but pressure, nothing but stress, and breathing back in the things that God does for us and gives to us. Breathing out human responsibility and breathing in relationship with the Almighty God, Sabbath. Today we're going to talk about breathing out God's job, which seems ridiculous to think about, and breathing in what God would have us do. You with me? So I'm going to read to you Matthew chapter 6, some of the verses there. This whole, the end of this whole chapter, that's really what this is all about. So relax, calm down, <coughs> trust God. Matthew chapter 6, beginning, beginning at verse 25. It's pretty important in the program. Jesus is speaking, and he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can what? Add a single hour to your life. Skipping ahead then. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Do you hear what he said? Whose job is it to make sure that you have all that you need? Whose job is it to make sure that your children, your family, those that you're responsible for, have all that they need? God's job. We put a tremendous amount of pressure on ourselves when we try and take on ourselves God's responsibility because we can't. How much money do you need to be taken care of? Think about it right now. Add it up. How much money do you need to be taken care of? You got your mortgage, right? You got your food bill, you got your electric bill, water bill, right? Insurance bill, you got this, you got this, you got it, you got a number in your head. How much do you need to be taken care of? Got the number? There's all these minimalists in our society today. You know about this? They used to live in a tiny house, right? They have hardly anything, right? And so their, their cost of living is what? A lot smaller. They get by with a lot less than that, right? How much money do you need to be taken care of? I was talking to one of our college students, and he was telling me about all the ways that he saved money and how cheap he lived. He, Noodles here, and lots and lots of potatoes, and ramen noodles, and he lives on a very, very small budget. Probably even less than a minimalist. How much money do you need to be taken care of? When I was a boy, my dad served a set of churches in the eastern province of Zambia. Probably the poorest part of the entire world. You go out into the bush and there would be whole families that would live on 400 US dollars a year. How much money do you need to be taken care of? Jesus doesn't tell us though to look at a minimalist. He doesn't tell us to look at a college student or the people of the eastern province of Zambia. He tells us to look at what? How much money do the sparrows out there have? Hmm? Have you 
with your heavenly Father in this realm. God can take care of you. God can provide for you using zero dollars. It isn't you and me going to work that somehow puts food on the table and makes sure that everything is taken care of, that those that we love and everything that we need is provided for. That's not the way that it works. God says, this is my job to make sure that you have the food that you need to uh, eat, the water that you need to drink, shelter over your head. It's my job to take care of that. And I can do that using zero dollars. Look at the birds. I provide for them. And then he goes on, if I do that for the birds, what makes you think I'm not going to do it for you? Because you are much more what? Valuable than they. Jesus didn't become a finch to die for the finches. He didn't become a sparrow to die for the sparrows. He became a human being to die for the human beings. The love that he has for you and me. He says to you and me, I will always provide everything that you need. Everything that you need, I'm going to provide even more than that. I'm going to do everything to make your life whole. To give your life meaning. To make your life happy. It is not our responsibility to make our lives complete. It is not our responsibility to make sure that we have all that we need. That's God's job. And when we try and do God's job and tell God that if he really wants to be a good job, good God, he needs to do this, be like that, provide this for me, make my life work out this way. This is how I want it to go. There's nothing wrong with having that in mind, seeking it, praying for it. But when God says no, what? All right. To not complain. Or if God says yes, to complain because it didn't go quite the way that we wanted. But to understand that God knows what I need, what fills my life better than what I do. Does that make sense? You with me? That's his job. <laughs> And when I sit and I tell God that he's messing up, or when I take that on myself and say that I have to make myself happy, I'm telling God that he, I can do a better job than he can. And that will lead to nothing but stress, nothing but worry, nothing but anxiety. And it certainly isn't going to provide rest. But when we... Jesus says, give all of that over to God and, so to speak, allow God to do his job. That's where the worry, we breathe out worry. We breathe out stress. We breathe in instead what God would have us do, and what is that? Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. What about work, Pastor? Doesn't God tell us to go to work? Doesn't he tell us that a man who does not work shall not eat? Doesn't he provide for us by us going to work and earning a paycheck? Isn't that the way God works? Not really. God says, I provide this for you. You're going to work then as you and me seeking God's righteousness and God's kingdom. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the rest of these things will be given to you and me. Our job is to serve our God. To live our lives for him, to give him thanks and glory, to put his will ahead of our will, to make sure that our lives are focused on him. And whatever pattern that looks like, whatever uh, way that that is, to ask ourselves, am I seeking the kingdom of God? Am I seeking to do what God would have me do? Or am I, am I trying to determine what God should or shouldn't do in my life? Seeking first his kingdom. Jesus not only says that we are more important than the sparrows, he says, your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need these things. God knows what you need even more than you do. Think about a two-year-old. Right? What does a two-year-old think that they need to do every night? Or not do every night? They never go to bed. I'm not going to bed. I'm going to fight you. It's going to be this chore every night to get this two-year-old into what? Bed, because they know better than you, mom and dad, about what I need, right? 
And you as mom and dad have to say, okay, come on, you gotta go to bed. You gotta go to sleep. Because you know very well that if they don't get sleep, what? But they know what's best for them, don't they? Food. They know what food is best for them. I don't want to eat my beans. I don't want to eat my peas. I want to eat gummy bears or fruit snacks or, right? Yet you as mom and dad say, no, you think that this is good for you, but it's not good for you. And unfortunately, it's the same for us as adults. Sometimes we think we know what would be right. We think we know what would be best. And we say to God, this is what you have to do. And when God doesn't do it, we throw a temper tantrum. And really what God says is, I know you. I know what you need. I love you. And I will always make sure that you have everything that you need to make your life what it's supposed to be. Trust me on this. And instead of trying to make yourself happy or put all the responsibility on yourself, God says instead, seek me. Seek a relationship with God. Put your future in my hands and you live for a day. Because each day has enough trouble of its own, right? So what has God given you today? What has God placed in front of you today? What blessings are yours today? Live in those things that God has put in front of you. Live to seek his righteousness in a relationship with him. I guess especially as we approach Thanksgiving. Right? To be thankful for what the Lord God has done. To be thankful even that the Lord God does not put my happiness in my hands. He doesn't put my future in my hands, but thankful that God holds on to that and provides for what I need. So I got demoted. I was no longer allowed to drive forklift because I had failed. I had failed to prevent an accident. It would have been easy for me to what? gripe and moan and complain and throw a temper tantrum. But what good would it have done? In the end, whatever the Lord brings, to learn to be thankful and happy for what the Lord has done. Truth is that I got demoted and pulled out of the warehouse and about two months later the whole warehouse shut down. And so I did lose my job. <laughs> And that was a good thing. The Lord has a way of taking care of his people. And sometimes we just need to trust that the Lord knows better than we do. Amen? Amen. Let's join together in our next hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Please <coughs>
continue with our prayers for this morning. Prayers, special prayers have been requested. Um, family, friends of Jim and Di, Bill and Sherry, both have serious health issues. We'll remember them in prayer. Also their friend, Linda, uh, we prayed for her in the past back surgery. She's recovering, so thanksgiving, but then also continued blessing. Uh, we remember Carol, our sister. Um, around this time every year, she has a scan to see if her cancer is back. And the scan has said it's not. And then our prayer has also been requested um, for the victims, the families of the victims of those of the shooting down in Colorado Springs uh, last night. Uh, so we pray for our society um, and to end hatred and, and, and things like that. Pray for Sierra, whose birthday is this week as well. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, Kim. Um, I fell down the stairs Friday, and um, I just thank God that um, I wasn't hurt. It's worse than I was, and I'm doing the things to pray for the, um, my leg. On your leg, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank God you're okay. Right? Any other prayer requests this morning? Any online? Say that again. Okay. Pray for safe travel for Al and Michelle Cook. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, Miss Linda. Continue prayers for Mom. It's doing well, so we'll say Thanksgiving, but also continued blessing on that, right? The yes. Um, just a college kid coming home and safe to travel for all things being welcome. All right, all the college kids coming home, safe travel. Yes, sir. Thanksgiving blessed. Just Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving. All right, let's stand and join together in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Forgive us for the times, Lord God, that we have doubted. Forgive us for the times that we have tried to do your job, Lord God. Remind us always that your job, you are the one who takes care of us. You provide all that we have. Everything that we have and everything that we are comes from you. Teach us instead, Lord God, to remember that our job is, is a relationship with you, to focus on your kingdom, your righteousness. Lord God, this Thanksgiving, fill our hearts with joy and thanksgiving, recognizing all the blessings that you have showered on us, all the things that you have done for us, not only your son Jesus, but every day you take care of us, you provide for us, and we thank you for that, Lord God. Fill our hearts with thanksgiving, Lord, and help us to recognize how blessed we truly are. We come to you, Lord God, with some special prayers, and we start by giving you thanks. Thanks for the year of life that you have given to our sister Sierra. Pray that you would continue to bless her. Watch over her this next year, Lord God. Fill her life with purpose and, and joy and, and thanksgiving, Lord God. We give you thanks for the healing that you have provided. We especially think of our, our sister Linda. Pray that you would continue to bless her and would help her to recover. We give you thanks for, for uh, sparing Tammy, that her fall wasn't worse. Thank you for watching over her. We know that it was you at work there, Lord God. Pray that you would continue to bless her recovery and help her to feel better. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the good news for our sister Carol. Pray that you would continue to give her good health. Keep the cancer from her body, Lord God. Thank you for sparing her, Lord God, and being with her. Uh, continue to watch over her, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord, that Linda is doing well as well with her back. Pray that you would continue to bless her recovery, make her stronger each day. Ask for your blessing on her. We come to you on behalf of Bill and Sherry, and we pray, Lord God, that you would be with them going through some difficult times. We commit them to your care and ask, Lord God, for healing, for blessing. Help them to know that even, even if they continue to struggle, that you love them, that you are with them, and, and Lord God, that you will take care of them. Give them that faith and that confidence. We bring to you, Lord God, our society, and we ask that you would end hatred, that you would teach us, our community, our society, to love as you have loved. Pray, Lord God, that you would stop those who would want to do harm. 
that you would put an end to such violence, Lord God. Uh, we know that that is not your will. Pray, Lord God, for those families that you would that you would strengthen them and, and comfort them in difficult days, Lord God. Finally, we bring to you our brother, those who are traveling. We think of Alan, Michelle, and all the college students who are coming home. Pray, Lord God, that you would send your angels to guard and protect, to bless the travel, Lord God. Bless the trip. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Follow along with the order of worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the land, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. to receive Christ's body and blood. We're going to start with the pianist and family. Body of our Lord Jesus, given unto death. And 
drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true way and the true life of us.
stand and join together in the song. <laughs> received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life in Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. brothers and sisters go in peace live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with joy Lord bless you Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Take a moment to greet the people around you. Take a look at the inside back cover of the program. Advent by Candlelight is coming up quickly. So is Advent by Firelight. So um, that's a week from Saturday. Right? You got that right? Yeah. I said that. So if you are interested in that, um, so Advent by Candlelight for the ladies, opportunity to do a little worship and to fellowship and to prepare for the busy Christmas season. Advent by firelight, same thing, a little bit different vibe. We're going to have a bonfire um, and prepare ourselves through fellowship for, for the busy Christmas season that is to come. Same night, uh, after the bonfire, the gentlemen will come up here and help the ladies put the church back together for Sunday morning. Sound good? But take, it, take note of those. Love to have you come. It's a good opportunity, especially the ladies, but anybody, but the men too, to invite somebody. Okay, it's, a, it's a good outreach opportunity to invite a family friend or somebody to come and join us for, for the evening, all right? Any thoughts on that, Erica? Sign up in the back. 
Just so we know how many tables to set up. Yeah, so uh, ladies, if you wouldn't mind signing up, how many people you're going to bring so that we know how many tables to prepare in here for them, okay? Um, otherwise, you can take a look at the other things. Craft fair come on up. Going to need some help with that, so keep that on your radar. Um, if you know that you want to help already, please speak with Miss Carol, that lady right there. She's the one who's organizing that. Uh, Going to need some help on the day of, all right? Just being here to make sure that it runs smoothly. It's a good opportunity. You usually get three or four hundred people into our facility. Kind of a neat thing. Yeah. yeah. And also, if anyone here would like a table, a booth. Uh, let me know. We still have a few available. Okay. So if you are crafty and you'd like to sell some of your crafts or uh, <coughs> whatever, homemade things, you can get a table for that. Okay. Anything else there? Schedule for the week. Uh, no catechism class. Where's Noah? Yay! <laughs> right? Yeah, no catechism class on Wednesday. No Delano Bible study on Wednesday. No mixed Bible study on Thursday morning. Um, because it's Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you can take a look at everything else that's going on. Teens are going hiking today, right? Yeah. All right, let's close our service. Bible class, Sunday school to follow. Love to have you stay. Uh, we're studying the book of Ephesians in Bible class. Let's stand and join together in Let All Things Know Living. <laughs>